Back in 1990, 12-year-old me watched this in the cinema, and I'm embarrassed to say I didn't see anything wrong with it. But I watched it again for the first time this week, and it's absolute sh**. This is Ski Patrol. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. This is Jerry Kramer and he's the main character. Hi. During ski season, he works for this old guy Pops at his ski resort, Snowy Peaks. He's keen to start shagging Pops' niece, Ellen, so he gets his dog Dumpster to lie down behind her car and pretend she's run him over. That could backfire. This seems like a pretty high-risk move for Dumpster, and how is this even supposed to get Ellen to like Jerry? No idea, but that's what's happening. As it's their first night back at the resort, all the ski patrollers are having a party at this house where they all live together. Providing the entertainment is this guy, Iceman. He sings karaoke and does impressions of Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson and Eddie Murphy. Really? Jerry and Iceman are best friends. Now let's meet the rest of this complete bunch of twats. This is Eddie Martinez. He's the ski patrol's explosive expert. He plays hilarious pranks, like pretending to throw dynamite in the house. <laughs> well, that may have been a laugh out loud moment, but Eddie really struggles with his impression of Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, I'll tell you, anybody got a cat? This is the director of the Ski Patrol, Murray. He's small and his voice is hilarious, apparently. Oh! <laughs> I can't be asked to find out what this guy's name is, but if you've seen Police Academy, he's just Proctor in a ski jacket. In fact, all these characters are just cut and paste from Police Academy. Mahoney, Jones, Tackleberry, Sergeant Harris, Lassard, etc. Yep. Ski Patrol's Callahan is Tiana, an exchange ski patroller from Bratislava. Why is there an exchange program between the US and what was then Czechoslovakia for ski patrollers? I've no idea, but that's what's happening. The last person I'm going to bother with is this guy Stanley. His hair is awful and he's desperate to be in the ski patrol, but he always fails the test. Poor thing. You may recognise the actor, it's Paul Feig or Feig or whatever it is, the man responsible for the Ghostbusters remake in 2016. Is that a fact? It is actually. What a cunt. Because Murray's so short, Jerry and his gang of wankers give him some fake growth formula. This stuff really work? It works. Today, it's the test to make sure everyone is suitable to be on ski patrol and everyone passes except Stanley. Oh, oh no! no. Murray makes Jerry the leader of Ski Patrol. Now, please don't let me down. Oh. Don't. Yeah, so pretty much all the jokes in this film seem to be someone falling over, the dog farting, and or both. Oh. Oh. Was it a trip? <laughs> This is shit. Tiana feels sorry for Stanley, because not only has he failed to make it onto the ski patrol, but his hair is awful. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Right, so there's this weird guy who lives in this caravan on snowy peaks. His name is a word that you're discouraged to say on YouTube, so I'm going to call him Bruce Hyde. Smart. All you need to know is that he's reckless on the slopes, and he has multiple personality disorder. I'm sorry? Yeah, like the rest of this film, it's not funny. On opening day, Bruce Hyde snowboards into people, knocking things over. Hilarity ensues, it doesn't, when he knocks a man into the back of a woman, making it look like they're shagging. And a group of Japanese skiers all get their cameras out and take photos of them. Are you serious? Yes, this is shit. For younger viewers, in comedy movies made around this time, this was a common thing. Before everyone had cameras on their phones, there seemed to be a running joke that Japanese people always carried cameras with them and took photos. Was this based on anything? Maybe it was and I was too young to notice. I'm guessing, however, it was just because loads of cameras were made in Japan. Anyway, later that day at this civilised party, we meet the main bad guy, Lance. He's part of the ski school and there's a big rivalry between ski school and ski patrol. All right. <laughs>
Lance is secretly working for this guy Maris, who wants to buy Snowy Peaks. The problem is, Pops won't sell it. So he's hired Lance and his friends to make sure the resort is closed down. But hang on, what's this? It's Jerry and all his friends riding inflatables down the mountain while Iceman sings songs on his karaoke machine. Most people at the civilized party are like, oh, look at those people there having fun. But Lance doesn't like fun. Time to put a little tarnish on Ski Patrol shine. So he gets his friends to break into the ski patrol house and steal these mice. I don't know whose the mice are or why they're there, and I can't be asked to go and watch it again to find out. But anyway, Lance and his friends release these mice at the 40th anniversary party they're having. From the reactions of the people at the party, you'd think they'd released a pride of lions. <laughs> Big Edna, the inspector, has no choice but to give Pops a citation. Well, strike one, gentlemen. For the next trick, they mess with Eddie's snow speeder, and this happens. <laughs> so that's two major violations against Snowy Peaks. Any more of this crap? and I'm gonna close this mountain down. Jerry and the gang are back to their growth pills joke and replace Murray's trousers with shorter ones. So when he puts them on, he thinks he's grown taller. This stuff's really working. Later that night at this bar where this guy in a red polo neck is dancing like this, Murray's telling everyone how he's grown three inches. If you're thinking I need to add this to my dance montage, trust me, there's a better one coming up. Murray gets drunk and does this. Then Tiana asks Stanley and his rubbish hair to dance. He seems nervous at first, but then he shows us his skills. I don't want to get a copyright claim, so I've put it all to the music from 11 Days, 11 Nights, Part 2. Yeah! 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 So now everyone loves Stanley, despite his awful hair. Meanwhile, outside, there's some sickening scene with Jerry and Ellen kissing in the snow. <laughs> in the morning, Murray wakes up hungover and finds the growth formula has been too effective. Oh, no, it hasn't. It was all just a cruel joke. I can only imagine Jerry and his friends had months to make a slightly scaled-down model of Murray's bedroom and all its contents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Later, up on the mountain, there's a photo shoot going on which is completely irrelevant to the plot. Now that's what I call dangerous curves. Yeah. Then Bruce Hyde steals this snow windsurfer thing and causes more trouble on the mountain. Once again, he knocks into people, causing them to be in what looks like a sex position. And once again, some Japanese people get their cameras out. Essentially, this whole scene in the film is to make Jerry look like a hero, when I think he looks like a cunt. Anyway, Lance and his friends still need to get Snowy Peaks closed down, so they frame Eddie for shoplifting from a hardware store by filling his coat with hand tools while he's busy showing this kid his Rodney Dangerfield impression. <laughs> I'll tell you, kid, this is some place to come shopping with your mom, understand? <laughs> Eddie is arrested for the shoplifting, nothing to do with the kid, and they need to get the money to bail him out, because he's needed to set off explosives tomorrow. Sadly, they don't have any money, but hang on, Jerry has an idea. Mountain High Bar Talent Contest, $1,000. $1, so yeah, Iceman will be singing, but apparently he's going to need Stanley too. At the talent show, Iceman comes out singing Dancing in the Street. Then Stanley comes out to duet with him, dressed as a woman, and mimes the female part. That doesn't look good. In fairness, the wig looks better than his normal hair. <laughs> True. And yeah, they win the contest. Everyone cheers, except Lance and his friends, and Tiana decides she's in love with Stanley. So Eddie has bailed out in time to set the explosives off on the mountain for this safety evaluation thing or whatever they're doing. But oh no, Lance and his friends have tampered with the avalanche maker or whatever it is, and Eddie's blown a hole in the roof of this house. As of five o'clock today, this mountain is closed. So Pops now has no choice but to sell the resort to Maris, who tells everyone in Ski Patrol that they're fired. Jerry tells Pops that he knows Lance and Maris were behind all this, so Pops goes to speak to Maris at this hot dog van. You sabotage this mountain. You're out of your mind, old man. 
But oh no, Bruce Hyde lights up his rocket skis and this triggers a chain of events that pushes Murray off the side of a cliff and sends this hot dog van sliding down the mountain with Maris stuck to it. So it's time for the ski patrol to kick into action. While they're chasing the hot dog van, Stanley overhears Murray screaming on this ledge. So he and Tiana use dumpster to take him a rope and pull him to safety. The hot dog van has ended up on this cliff edge. Pops volunteers to be the one to take Maris the rope and will only save him if he admits to sabotaging the mountain. He agrees and is saved just in time. For some reason, Big Edna is there to witness all of this and she seems to also have the power to arrest Maris. So everything's back to how it was and everyone's happy. But oh no, Lance and his friends are getting away. Oh no! So they chase them and it turns into a ski chase that somehow sees Jerry and Lance tied together with a rubber band. <laughs> So next thing we see is Stanley being made a fully-fledged member of the Ski Patrol. Pops is making a toast and dumps the belches in Murray's face. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the film. Thank God. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.